In this tutorial, we're going to learn how to create an illustrated article. This is going to be mainly directed towards printed media, but it can also be helpful for different types of articles in digital media. The first thing to do will be to choose our article. If we don't have one already, we can make up whatever we want. In this case, we're going to have an article about learning languages, so we're going to create our illustration around that theme. As with every project, we can create a mood board related to our article theme and style of illustration to help us with the next steps. For us, the article is going to be separated into two parts, the text and the illustration. At the same time, the text is going to be divided into three, the headline, the subheading and the gross of the text. The text might have different weights if there is a byline, but that's not going to be really important for us at the moment. We need to have a rough idea of how we want our article to look before we start sketching. We need to know how much space we're going to give the illustration and how much the text. We need an illustration big enough and easy to understand, so people will want to read the article just by looking at it. We are going to create a double page article, so the number of layouts that we can create are multiple. We can have one illustration that fills both pages, but in this case we're going to create a main illustration that's going to be on the first page and then a smaller one on the second page. With our rough sketch we can create the layout. As we're going to create an article for a magazine, we're going to design the layout as we were going to create a magazine of our own. We create a new file using the fancy settings. We'll use the A4 size as it's a common one and leave the bleed as 5mm and resolution as 350 dpi. If your illustration is going to be in color, make sure to change the basic expression color. We can also change the number of pages. We're going to create 8 in this case, although we're only going to be using 2 for the article. And we're going to select the left binding so our magazine is read from left to right. We're going to leave the rest of the settings like that and click OK. I want to have a bigger inner border, so I'm going to select the page I want to modify, go to Edit, Canvas Properties, and I'm going to make it a few millimeters bigger. I'm going to do that again for the second page of the magazine, but I'm going to leave the rest the way they are right now and change them in the future if needed. The next thing I'm going to do is divide the page in three columns for a text, and I'm going to use the guides to do it. You just need to grab from the left or top where the ruler is showing and drag it to the page. If you want to be very precise, you can select the guide and modify the position at the subtool properties. When I'm done with the first page, I'm selecting the guides, copying and pasting them on the second page. Now that our pages are divided, we're going to add the text and we're going to do it a little bit differently than you will usually do. We're going to create a new layer, go to the figure tool and create as many shapes as columns we need, in this case, three. Once we have the shapes where our text is going to be, we're going to the layer, left click over it and click on File Object, Convert Layer to File Object and click OK. Save the file and then open it. Here's where we're going to place our text. At this moment it doesn't need to be perfect, but I recommend having the text already separated in columns to make the whole process faster. We're going to create the first box of text. The typography doesn't need to be anything special, just something easy to read. We're going to make it size 9 and maybe change it in the future. Same with the line space and character spacing. We can also play with the character spacing to make sure that the text fits perfectly to our box. Once the first block of text is to our liking, we're going to copy-paste it and move it to the center column. Same with the third column. This way the three text boxes are going to be part of the same layer. Before saving the file, we're going to hide the layer where we have the color boxes so it doesn't show on our main file. Once it's saved, we can go back to the main file and see our text appear there. We can change the size easily without any lagging and we can go back to the text file in case we need to make any changes. When we're done with the first page, we're going to repeat the same process with the second one. We'll add now the headline and subheading. As this is a small amount of text, we're going to just use the text tool as you will usually do. 
We're using a serif typography for the text, but we're going to use a non-serif one for the headline. Again, it doesn't need to be perfect. We just need to establish a space for it. We'll fix it at the final composition stage. Now that all the text is placed on both our pages, we know how much space we have for the illustration. We could also work the opposite way, creating the illustration and then placing the text around it. It depends on our preferences. At this point, having created the article file and placed the body text, heading and subheading and having a rough idea of how we want our project to look, we're done with the main and most important part for our article text. So, in the next video, we're going to focus on the other crucial part the illustration, moving on to the sketching and coloring phase.